So self-esteem and insecurity is something that I think Generation C heavily struggles with. I really, really hated myself. I felt weak. I think that's the key word. I felt like a burden. Some of the new challenges I see for this generation is finding an identity. I was starting to look at myself from everybody else's eyes, and then I started to believe in that. I hated how I looked when I saw myself in the mirror. One of the things I think today's youth struggle with the most is isolation and disconnect. For some reason, I just felt so alone. It was horrible. I felt, I felt sad. I was lonely. I was so lonely. I felt that I was the only one in the entire world that felt like this, and that there was no cure. What do I need to do to get someone to realize that I'm not okay? Lonely, broken, isolated, ashamed, sad. And when I confronted to the counselor, hey, I'm actually suicidal, the word suicidal came out of my mouth and I'm like, oh. My toughest challenge in life has been to come to terms with my backstory. I've been struggling with my gender identi identity for a really long time. A build-up of going through eating disorders, trying to create this identity for what, who Nazia was. Sort of managing like my depression and anxiety. I think just not depend on everybody else's happiness, I think has been my toughest challenge. Back then, 30 years ago, People didn't have a phone in their hands, a gadget constantly that they had access to social media. And managing the social media is, tends to be very difficult because what we have found is that social media is not only addicting, but too much social media exposure can lower a person's self-esteem. She's boring. She's not good. She's, she's weak. Yeah, I had so many bad and negative words about myself. I had this amazing physique and looked in the mirror and I was like, I still hate myself. I still think I'm fat. I still don't think I'm worthy or I deserve what I need to get in life. And then I started to say like, oh, you're a bad dancer. Oh, you have a bu ugly body. Oh, you're not pretty. And, and I started to like fix my clothes in front of people and I'm like, no, I can't, no. And then I try something else and be like, yeah, I'm confident. And then I was like, no, I'm fat. No, I'm ugly. No, I, this doesn't look good on me. And a product of that is, is because when we look at social media, we're looking at people's best version of themselves. I was like, I can't let these people see that this already is a broken mess. And at this time I'm 14. I was like, I can't let anybody see that. Not feeling enough was probably the most destructive thing I lived with. And still you have that. You still have this little voice that says, hey, maybe, you know, you're still not good enough. That's tough to understand because we're not all living the best version of ourselves 100% of the time. But our mind will make us believe that these other individuals are, and it'll make us question ourselves. They say that a person like this is good and I tried to be like that and it didn't work. I was disappointed. So these are all the things that we take in thinking this is what is acceptable, thinking this is what makes you successful. you got to have flawless skin, flawless hair. That's the way you build yourself up to go up in the world somehow. And then I tried instead of, okay, I don't need to look good, but then I can speak like I'm, I'm a strong and I tried to be something I didn't believe that I was. I always tried to be what people expected. And I always tried to be what everybody want, wanted me to be. Young people jump on social media and they see people who have it all figured out. The world is so catered towards recognition of superstardom, of massive success, of huge productivity. And you look around and you're seeing everybody working, having fun with their life. And all I was doing was waking up, going to the gym, wasting my time. It was this feeling that I didn't belong, I didn't fit. And that it was really difficult to just talk to someone about it. I think people can get lost in that mix and they can feel worthless and they can feel like they don't have a, a purpose in this world. I think I was scared a lot because I didn't know where my place in this planet was, what my purpose was, what was I doing? I just want to be me. But what does it mean to be me? 
in today's society, there's so much information coming in all the time, so much information being assimilated by our brain and our mind, trying to figure out what's real, what does fit our belief systems, what doesn't. And I started to overthink and I started to make stories and also stories about myself. He thinks that I'm this, yes, and then I started to believe that. Negative thoughts. This type of information constantly coming in is an overload to the brain, and this can create intense symptoms of anxiety for Generation Z. I just started like shaking, I was just really nervous. I haven't been out of the house for two weeks, so I was just really like, okay, and everything in my body was just like, just get back in the house, and just lock yourself in the room, lock yourself in the room, you're safe there, like no one can affect you, lock yourself in the room. I was in, in a really bad space, I couldn't see myself live till I was 20. And I, I didn't want to look myself in the mirror. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to like face reality because it sucked pretty much. I felt like this was it for me. I was going to live a lonely life. I was going to live a sad life where I couldn't like connect with anyone. Being able to think multidimensional, I think is something Generation Z also struggles with, knowing that it's not just one variable, it's many variables. It's not just one tree, it's the whole forest. I think there was a combination of a lot of things. No, actually not, I think. It was a combination of a lot of things. You are trying to make your parents happy. You're trying to make your career happy. You're trying to make everybody around you happy but you. I was drowning, I think, and I didn't know how to speak about it. But I realised, wow, I had spent so many years trying to look good that nobody taught me how to love myself mentally or how to condition the mind. And that's when the penny dropped. And then I learned about self-love. I was like, oh, okay, what's this about? I know how it feels to look at yourself in the mirror and not liking what you see. I know how it feels to bully yourself and go deeper and hate yourself. If you feel pain, frustration, if you feel worthless, if you feel forgotten, if you feel unnecessary, I know exactly, I know exactly how you feel. I know how it feels to stand on the outside and looking in and feel like there's no solution to what you're feeling, but you're not alone. We're a lot of people feeling the same way. The first thing I want you to know is you're not alone. There's billions of people in this world and every single one of us go through some kind of turmoil in our life. So not feeling alone makes it a bit easier, right? If you find yourself in any of these dark places, there are a few things that I would recommend. Number one, you need to lighten up. How do you lighten up? Forgive. We find it easier to forgive those who've betrayed us than we find it easy to forgive ourselves. I struggled with self-forgiveness. We talk about self-care, we talk about self-love. You can't do it if you're keeping yourself on a hook. I accepted that I didn't, there was no way I could have known what to do. I accepted that and I was able to forgive myself and I was able to build on the best success that I've ever had. And that success is not any business that I own. It's not any talent that I have. That success is knowing that I can actually wake up every day and look at myself in the mirror and say, I like that guy and I like who he's become. You have to accept what's in front of you and you have to love it. Learn to become your own best friend. Tell yourself that I love you. Tell yourself that you're beautiful and strong and independent. That's the most single thing I wished I had learned when I was growing up. I always needed a person telling me that I was enough, but you're enough and you're the only one that should say that because you're enough. You always are, you always will be. The second thing I would advise anyone is talk. One of the biggest mistakes I made was not speak about what I was going through. And that made it hard because the internal dialogue I had with myself wasn't healthy. I put all my trust in hoping that someone was gonna ask me if I was okay. And out of my 50 friends and along with the 
20 other members of my family, I only had one person that asked me if I was okay. And I was extremely lucky that they did ask me. Speak, open up. It's really, really difficult to be vulnerable, whether you're a man or a woman. But what I do know is that vulnerability is the birthplace of the, the greatest strength. Every single person has help at some point and that you don't have to go through this by yourself. And that it's probably the worst way to try and go through it is to keep it bottled up and to try and deal with it by yourself. If they don't accept you, that's not your problem. That's their problem. You're enough no matter what. You have to be brave. And that's the scariest part is taking that first step to be brave and to acknowledge that there is a problem. If I could go back, I would have been completely honest with everyone and taken ownership of it because that allowed me to become more empowered to manage it. And then you're in a much better place to overcome the problem. I wish you the best of luck. This is, you know, it's an ongoing problem for myself. It's a part of everyday life and there's millions of us that struggle with mental health problems every single day. The first thing you should do, as soon as you finish watching this video, is get yourself in front of a mirror and start the conversation that you find the most difficult to have. Difficult discussions are the best thing ever. The moment you can have a difficult discussion yourself, you do what I call disarming your demons. If you disarm your demons, nobody can hold anything against you.